Okay, we now define the physical quantity work. Okay, work, a physical quantity is a mathematical definition. Prior to your introduction to physics, somewhere along the way in some previous science class, you may have heard somewhere along the way that work is equal to force times distance. Not quite. There's a much more mathematically precise way of describing it. Work, which is referred to as W, by definition is equal to the following four constant forces. Four constant forces is the dot product between the force vector and the displacement vector over which the force acts. So let me write that out. This is the displacement vector over which the force acts. And once again, as I said, this is the definition of work for constant forces. Okay, now let me explain what is meant here by the displacement vector. I'm going to use my air track to do so. I don't even have to turn the air on, however, for this simple demonstration. Let's say I apply a constant force like so to the cart over some displacement delta R, like that. While I was doing so, as we say I was doing work, the amount of work that I was doing is equal to this mathematical definition here. The displacement vector, however, is the displacement vector over which the force that I am applying acts. Now, after I let go of the cart, for example, like so, well, friction is still working on it as it slides across the surface. However, I am no longer doing work on the object because I am no longer exerting the force on the object. So the delta R there is specifically the displacement vector over which that force acts. Okay, now we do have here a new mathematical definition, this new quantity called work. So let's go ahead and check the units. Okay, the units of work are basically force times distance. So in metric SI units, this is of course primarily what we work in. In metric SI units, then we have a force in terms of newtons being multiplied by the displacement here, a distance in terms of meters. A newton meter, however, is given its own name. It starts with a J. You're probably familiar with it. It's what's called a joule. A joule is somebody's name, by the way and it's spelled in the following manner. We just abbreviate it as a capital J. Now, still within the metric system, if you recall briefly, we also have the CGS system. The CGS system is very rarely mentioned in class, if at all, but it does appear every now and then specifically on the AP physics exam. So therefore, I'm gonna describe it here, and it is, by the way, in this context of work and energy that this is essentially the last time that we're gonna see the English, or excuse me, the CGS system. So now in the CGS system, if you recall briefly, force is in terms of dimes, and then we're multiplying that by a displacement in terms of centimeters. A dime centimeter is also given its own name. It's referred to as an erg. There's actually a really easy way to remember it. It's kind of a silly physics joke. It goes like this. The dying centimeter goes erg, like so. That's the easiest way to remember what an erg is. It's a dying centimeter. You know, as I was about to mention also a few moments ago, this is also one of the last times in which we're gonna see the English or imperial system of units as well. In the old English system, they of course get very creative when it comes to the units. If you recall, we have force in terms of pounds and then multiplied by displacement here in terms of feet. This is just somewhat cleverly referred to as a foot pound and nothing more than that. Like so. However, of course, when it comes to individual examples, usually, by and large, almost exclusively, we're going to see everything in terms of the metric SI system. We're going to see everything in terms of joules. Okay, and then at this point going forwards, what we now do is we just do a couple of practice calculation types of examples. Simple dynamical situations that we saw in the previous unit. Let's now examine the forces acting on individual objects in those situations and calculate the work done by those forces. I'll begin that in the next lecture.